Hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Kieran, a freelance graphic designer based in London. Uh, and today we are in our two day stream with a very talented and awesome, I've got to mention that part, awesome graphic designer, Rachel Roth. Rachel, how are you doing? Hello, hey, doing well? How are you? How are we feeling today? I'm good. All good. I'm excited to sort of jump into it from yesterday. We did a lot yes. of this which is awesome. Yeah, we made, um, we made a nice dent in, in things. It was it was, uh, it was a good one. We've um, so just a few things for those uh, who who weren't here yesterday, um, and for all I guess who come back quite often. Uh, we've got our lovely mediators today who are going to keep our chat nice and safe and friendly, um, and just a few people I can see already kind of coming through, which is great. Um, and also just to obviously let you know, if you're on YouTube, you know, pop on to Behance if you can. Uh, our at Behance.net Adobe Live, um, and what I'll be doing is I'll be reading the comments directly from there and passing those straight to Rachel so she can hear your lovely, lovely comments. Um, yes, talk to us. <laughs> exactly, we want to hear, we want to hear from you guys, definitely. Um, so just give uh, people a bit of a roundup as to what happened yesterday, um, so everyone's in the loop. Uh, so we're in the process of designing a typographic zine, uh, which is going to be interpreting uh, Rachel's notes over the past year. So yesterday we worked on some cool things, which Rachel's going to go into shortly. And just a few things to touch on, we started setting up our document, getting ready for grids, looking at some really cool visual research uh, and experimenting um, with some awesome spreads. And uh, today I'll touch on it briefly and then Rachel can, can definitely go through it. Um, we'll be finalizing a lot of the spreads and then we're going to actually see this wonderful zine come to life. So uh, yeah, Rachel, I'm excited to jump into it when you are. Yes, I'm ready. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. Cool. Um, so we opened yesterday with um, this kind of introduction, which I thought we could run through again, which just, you know, outlines what we're doing here, why we're here, and some of these kind of guiding forces for this typographic zine. Um, so yeah, so for those who weren't here yesterday or those that were, just a reminder, um, again, the task here is we are designing a typographic zine. And in order to, you know, kind of stay on track, um, I find it's helpful to work within limitations, you know, kind of set these rules for yourself, um, just so we have some sort of boundaries to work within. So the limitations for this, we are going to be doing all black and white, no color. Um, this is a documentation of 2020 of the year. So we're going to go chronologically. Um, the page count will need to be divisible by four as this is something that we are going to print and will eventually be saddle stitched and use all content. So there was quite a bit. Um, I think at the end of it all, I had 72 pages of notes. So trying to fit all of that neatly into this little four by six typographic zine. Um, and then since this is about 2020, um, I find it helpful to kind of attach some words to what happened that year. Maybe this will lead to some visuals. So, you know, I think we can all agree 2020 was a bit chaotic. It was also still very transformative, loud, quiet, confined, monotonous, and messy. <laughs> so these are some words that we're working with that could lead to some visuals. Um, and then again, just kind of a reminder, this is not for a client. This is just purely for fun, um, explorative, playing with typography. So yeah, yeah. We're, it's more about the process. It's not gonna, not gonna be this mm. perfect uh, streamlined thing. So- and They're the best ones, right? Who we <laughs> can create, fun. exactly, yeah. Less pressure. Definitely. I can see through the chat as well. We've got uh, we've got Steve who's already said uh, you could fry bacon on this stream, sizzling hot. <laughs> so uh, if people were quite on it, hopefully some of you you know from yesterday as well. So you've had a bit of a 
a, a, a dive into uh, Rachel's process. But for those obviously who are new today, obviously welcome. So uh, yeah, it's welcome. exciting for our last our last day as well. Yeah, the last leg. Um, Where's the time gone, right? <laughs> I know. Time flies when we're having fun, right? Indeed. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, okay, so then I also thought, um, just to kind of as a refresh of what we're working on here. So I actually had the pleasure of doing Adobe Live three years ago and did the same thing then. Um, I did the typographic zine for 2017. So what we're doing today is kind of a continuation of that, something that could maybe turn into a series at some point. Um, I did actually have these printed as well. So I have the copies of those. You can see here, it's like a nice um, four by six, kind of a smaller size, size of a postcard. Um, and this is what was created last time. So you can kind of see how some of this will translate to what we're working on today. Um, but again, just using type, colors, shapes. Um, so yeah, borrowing some from this, but also kind of redefining what it could be and... Um, Got some lovely inspiration there, isn't it, right? It's, it's quite a nice collective taste of a um, variety of different things going on, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so let's get back to where we were. Um, yeah. So yesterday we were playing around. So I, I went back after the session um, last night and kind of tweaked some things, um, made some adjustments so I can kind of run through those really quick. Um, yesterday we had been working on some covers and I kind of, I had, like, I had it in my mind that I wanted to use the script on the cover, but it just wasn't really working. And I realized um, that it was because I didn't like the numbers and that typeface. <laughs> so mm. what I decided to do, so, okay, so these are the studies that we had yesterday. Um, this was the script again, like it just like wasn't feeling right yet. So I changed it to these numbers, which feel just like, you know, like, so much better, I think. So um, yes, yeah, so we're, we're pivoting and we're going, going to be using a different script typeface, one with prettier numbers. So mm. uh, these were just some studies, again, that we worked on yesterday. Um, just on the uh, chunky fonts. I remember that, that that pulled up quite a lot actually in the in the chat yesterday. We liked to uh, yes. come in exactly the name of that font, but yeah, the chunky font. That was what that's what Druk, a lot yes. of the. Uh, this was, is, is it drunk? Uh, drunk? Druk. It's D D R U K. Druk. Druk. I was partly close. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking drunk. of, but yeah, yeah. Druk, <laughs> Druky drunk. But yeah, Druk. Um, yeah, that was a good type because I went that went quite well with the uh, the chat yesterday. So, yes, which is yeah, it's um, a lovely extended, you know, very bold typeface. Um, but again, like last year, or not last year, um, the last issue was much more sans serif. So I really liked this idea of something much more ornate and just, you know, like a, a nice contrast to what we did last time. So I was feeling pretty good about where that ended up. So this is, this is the cover as of now. Um, I love the bleeding as well off the edge, right? That's, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, touching that. Um, nice. so keeping like, I, I think it's nice having it just bleed off the sides and not the bottom. Cause mm. then we keep that margin that we had with the last one. So it's even like, you know, if we were to mm. set, set this zine next to the, to the last one, we would have that kind of common margin and, you know, just like another, a uh, little cohesive element there. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'll just kind of walk through what I messed with yesterday after our session. Um, so here, Last time I had this kind of introductive page um, that said like write something every day and then I had a table of contents and I kind of I decided that maybe the table of contents it's like not really necessary uh, not really feeling at this time so I think it's always nice when you're doing editorial design or a book um, a zine things with pacing it's nice to mm -hmm. carry some element from the cover onto that first title page so what I did here is I just took um, daily writings, the title, and then placed it in the exact same spot on the inside, but inversed it. So nice. maybe we could add something to this, but I also think there's something nice about when you first open um, a publication, just having this kind of like clean breathing room, like mm. this is what it is. So 
just on that as well, you feel like even when you mentioned just time to breathe, because I guess it's been a weird year for us all, right? So just have that element of just opening up. It's been a crazy year and just having a space, <laughs> yeah. of, you know, almost like blank, you know, like canvas just to take it all in before you get yes. into the whole, how crazy your year's been. So um, yeah, really nice. Totally. Um, and then this is not, this is definitely a work in progress. Um, but I do think there could be something nice here on this uh, second spread that just is kind of this introductive thing. So write something every day. Mm. That was like a prompt that we had in the last issue. Um, so I was thinking it'd be nice to do that here. And then I also liked, you know, our little quote that we had in the intro. Um, you know, I thought maybe we could have something like that here at the beginning. That's kind of, um, mm. you know, lends itself to this idea of just creating something and not so much worrying about like how it looks in the end. Mm. Um, so yeah put that quote in there we'll see if we want to keep it or not and then i sprinkled in the months as just kind of this secondary layer again i think this is something that we can kind of work on today because this is mm. not this is not feeling right for me yet so we'll get into that um yeah so okay another thing uh, last night i kind of went through and tried to just like establish some pacing so that we knew what we were going to work on today. Um, so I thought for winter we could have, maybe there's some sort of interaction with the script and the sans serif. Um, so we're going to play with that a little bit on this. I also thought, you know, winter was kind of the last, like, I don't know, normal uh, bright spot of mm -hmm. 2020. So, you know, maybe there's something on this page that feels like a little more like fun and, mm -hmm. um, you know, a little more carefree, I guess. Yeah, um, and then I started pulling out some content that we can use. We might be cutting some of this down, but these were just, these are some things that we can work with. Like, like I said yesterday, we're just kind of getting the content in there and then we can decide mm. what we want to do with it. Yeah. And just uh, on that as well, I was going to say, could we, we saw some of your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some of your, your dates that you put down. And I think that went down quite nice with the, with the audience yesterday about your, I think drinking the sort of flower water by mistake and oh, little yeah. bits and bobs. <laughs> and um, I think I can actually see some from the chat. Actually, a lot of people that were there yesterday, which is quite nice. So we've got uh, Hillary Britton and Viola, uh, obviously Anika as well, which is which will yeah, which is great. Um, Steve, yeah, and Megan, and a lot of people there that were here yesterday. So I think amazing they're here to see the journey, Rachel, from yesterday to today. So uh, we are yeah. on a journey. Yes, Let's keep going. This is great. Um, yeah, these were. A couple i think we wrote off some of these yesterday um mm. this this one i really like uh so one of my friends was telling me how her aunt for lent was getting rid of something that she didn't need every day and on this day uh she was saying that she was planning to leave two 10 pound weights at the gym without telling anybody <laughs> so it's like <laughs> she's like getting rid of these things but doing it in this like discreet um kind of funny way so yeah i just like thought that was hilarious um so yeah so these are some notes from winter mm. um again yesterday we had kind of started playing with this idea of shapes and something a little bit more fluid mm. so this is again just kind of like a sketch left over from yesterday but i think we can kind of fold mm. it in somewhere later on here um you know again the heart we talked about the heart i think the heart's mm. gonna come in somewhere else um and then we had started working on this spring um introductive chapter opener mm. um and we decided it was you know spring was kind of this like explosive moment of a global pandemic breaking out and this kind of like chaotic confusion so really trying to um kind of echo those feelings in this spread and i've added a couple more um entries here so we're gonna i think we could start off just kind of like finishing this since this is where we left off yesterday um and yeah, just again, kind of leaning into mm. this kind of like messy, confusing um, season. Um, you know, pretty much sums up the year, right? And uh, <laughs> it was quite yeah, nice yeah. yesterday when you when you were playing around with the text. We had like a sort of text wrap moment, and then it was just yes. like, oh, okay, things going in, and yeah, that was that was quite cool, right? Just seeing. Yeah, the honestly, the the text wrap, I kind of like completely <laughs> forgot about the text wrap, and that's yeah, it's kind of like a 
That was Can't a forget a text moment. wrap, Rachel. Can't yeah, that. That was, that was, I'm that like was our friend. loving the loving the text wrap. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna play with that. Um, and yeah, again, I've just kind of gone through and started pacing some more things out. Um, so we're just gonna get through as much as we can get through and see how it goes. Um, I've also decided I've like placed all of the content. So, like I said, I had. 72 pages by the end of last year of just like uh, daily notes. And I put all of that in here. We've aligned it to the baseline grid. It's 2.5 type, uh, 2.5 point size type. So quite small, but if you print it, it actually is still legible. So it's kind of this like textural mm. appendix element, but also can be read if, you know, if you were to feel so inclined. Um, mm -hmm. so I was starting to mess with last night a little bit, like, do we want to, do we want to play with like the column count and structure, or maybe it's just this like super, um, you know, straightforward, almost like a dictionary kind of like mm -hmm. file, filing Index, of like. everything. Exactly. Like mm -hmm. I kind of like that. It feels very technical in that sense. Like it's just this like yeah. really long, um, like informative spreads. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see. I'm kind of liking that though. So that's quite a nice balance though, isn't it? You meant because obviously you've got the sort of play for, you know, different shapes and things happening in, in the actual spreads and at the back, you've got that sort of, you know, calm, <clears throat> sort of, almost collated way of just having, you know, a much, much more organized, refined way of documenting it. So it's quite a nice balance between the two. Exactly. And, you know, mm. one of the, you know, kind of rules that we established was including all of the content. So mm. I feel like instead of trying to like work it into every spread, it's, I don't know. There's something nice about it, just kind of like living in its own section. Mm. Um, just to add from the chat, Ria said, this is beautiful. So you've already got a few, we're in the process, but yeah, a lot of people are loving what you're doing right now. So uh, amazing. this is awesome. Um, yeah. And it's, it does kind of remind me of like something you would do in school. Like I've, I remember <laughs> one of our first um, modular grid assignments, we had to lay out uh the weather forecast for the week in like 10 different ways on a modular grid so i feel like it's like it's like a little bit of that it's kind of just like we've, we've created this modular grid and now we're just using type to mm. you know mess with it and like experiment um i time. always find that like with grids though like it's it's obviously it's there to kind of you know guide you into where you should be but it's i mean that's the point of like being a creative especially when it's a brief that's not a client brief and it's actually something you can make Totally. Off your own back because you can stick to that and you can also just go a bit off piece and i mean that's the i love going off piece not conversation wise but just in terms of design <laughs> that too but just yeah this yeah is cool. yeah cool. and I, yeah i just you know like you said it creates this kind of uh cohesiveness mm. and kind of this like skeleton of uh what we're working with so okay um and again, we've pulled this inspiration um, reference onto our little pasteboard over here. And so we're kind of um, borrowing the essence of some of these. So again, using this kind of like crammed type, but then there was also this um, really interesting design from the New York Times Magazine, which has really mm. wonderful typographic layouts. If you um, are not familiar with it, great, great design. Um, so kind of, capturing some of that and making it our own. Um, okay, so like we have, like we, we were liking some of this kind of like awkward spacing. So I was trying to figure out like how we can play with that, um, but make it feel like a little intentional at the same time. Like I don't want it to just be kind of this like random like thing. A method to the madness in a way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Anyways, we can decide if we want to play with that. Um, but these are wrapping around. So I, I actually kind of was liking what we were doing here too. So um, we did this little trick of the 95% opacity on the letters here. So it's kind of this like mm. layered screen printy effect, but um, mm. like a faux version of that. And then we've wrapped the words around the S and the P, but not the R. So we have kind of like I was saying, we have these like little transparent moments here um mm. where it is covering the word but we still still is like slightly there if we want to see it um i feel like i have quite a deeper meaning because it's covering that word pandemic which we don't want to imagine that yeah, is what we're right? seeing but actually get a bit now really deep now aren't we but yeah it's the idea of obviously not yeah. wanting to fully show it but yeah 
Uh, I don't know if that's intentional, but yeah, it's completely it's, it's intentional. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why I thought. That's why I thought I'd, I've dropped that in there. Um, yeah, we, I just realized we've got a few people as well who's joined, which is great. So we've, we've got Jessica T, uh, and we've got Emma P as well. And just for those again, just so you're in the process of and, and caught up to speed of what we're doing now, um, you're currently watching Rachel uh, in the process uh, designing her typographic zine, uh, interpreting her notes over the past year. So um, yeah, we're just in that process now of actually refining and starting to kind of put together all of those elements that we were exploring with yesterday. So um, you're at a good, good moment right now you've, that you've, you've jumped in. Um, so another thing, so we talked about like, so these are just um, different entries that I've pulled that relate to kind of like the outbreak of the pandemic. And we're just kind of like cramming everything onto this spread. So it's kind of this, um, I mean, like we mentioned before, just kind of this like overstimulation of news and headlines and information and statistics and um, all kinds of that. I thought it could also be nice to um, to maybe have some little pieces where it's mm. the really small 2.5 that we're used 2.5 size type that we're using in the appendix like maybe bringing in some of that throughout and having that be kind of like a like little textural detail amidst mm. these like larger um, typographic moments it's nice that you're kind of utilizing as well those those areas where it's just a bit of negative space so you've just got like you said obviously it's quite a small type but actually it's in that space so your, your eyes kind of hone in on it yes um, yeah totally which is quite cool mm. and another thing we talked about yesterday is just um having this nice scale um contrast so having something like very large and then mm. something teeny tiny I also really liked um, from our original, so this was like kind of the first interpretation of the spread that we did that eventually led to this. But I did like um, having some that were like really overlapped and less messy. So I'm thinking mm. uh, maybe we can do that with some of these other ones, like have more of that overlap, which um, nice. I think is kind of interesting. But we're sticking to our grid, so let's see. And I can see, um, yeah, this video <laughs> say this is so chaotic, but so clean at the same time. It's it's that balance, right, of uh, the yin and the yang of just yeah, chaotic madness, yes. but also in a nice, clean, you know, sufficient way. Okay. Um, also, it's good to know, like again, obviously a bit back, a bit back your background as well, because obviously you're you're based in New York, right? So, and I'm in London, so we're quite far apart. So, um, yeah, I guess obviously you experience in your year opposite ends of the world from where I am. Um, yeah. yeah. Must be quite, yeah, everyone's quite had such thing. a it's like we've all been going through it at the same time but it's all mm. everyone's also had like their very own personal experience with it and kind exactly. of their own version of the madness um i feel like we could all like literally everyone even in the chat if you this is like such a good almost like a mini task that you could set yourself if you wanted to kind of document um you know your own experience of what you've been through the year, even if it's by print you know on paper and necessarily on a on the design, but if it's something just to kind of document your experience. So again, it'd be good to know in the chat, you know, where you guys are from, different parts of the world, um, you know, put it in the chat and we can sort of talk about it. And um, yeah, it'd be good to know where everyone's from and we can all discuss, you know, those little bits that we've had throughout the year ourselves. It'd be quite cool. And so again, I'm just uh, playing around with how we can have this overlap. And, you know, we want it to be like a little balanced from these two pieces since it's the same size so kind of just finding that sweet spot um because this we have the overlap of those two letters so it gets a little mm. more opaque which like maybe is fine it almost feels like it, it works quite nice as i know it's obviously for, for printing a booklet but i feel like it worked quite nice even a poster just the way you oh, kind yeah. of you know got it out i'll have that model totally it's uh... Uh, yeah i mean i feel like each yeah. Each of these spreads could kind of be a poster. I mean, that's, I think mm. that's definitely one way that we could look at it. Mm. Um, uh, so yeah. we've got uh, Manika Chinin from New Delhi, India. So that's quite cool. So any other places that, you know, cool. that you're kind of calling in from, you know, put it in there. But um, I mean, that's the beauty of doing, you know, with Adobe Live and with Behance as well. It, it's literally created from all over the world. So it's very, very cool to kind of, you know, get on board in this platform and sort of see, uh, different creatives in a different space so uh keep them coming guys question wise and also i think we've got uh one of your friends perhaps rachel uh stephanie uh bruckler i hope i'm saying that correctly yes. so go rachie with loads of emoji hand claps <laughs> so uh yeah i actually good. met steph um at my first adobe live she was a fellow um editorial ah. designer there so 
nice. Steph and I uh, come and go full circle now. Nice, nice. I feel like we've been on a little network of like the different people from different countries right now. So this is great. We've got Netherlands as well. That we've been in there. Italy as well. Um, yeah, it's all over the world, which is great. Uh, different time zones completely, but yeah, <laughs> it's still brilliant. Global, Definitely. global moments. <clears throat> um, yeah, so like I was thinking, like we said, we really like this kind of like messiness of this. So it's like just it's just like a matter of like finding that balance. Um, mm. like I think it's kind of cool actually to have. I'm kind of liking some of this um, really tiny dates. Like maybe we maybe mm. we take this even. Like that's eight points, and maybe we take it even out of like five or something really tiny. Um, Be good to know as well. Like even in the check, because I think yesterday you know we we touched on um, you know where we get our inspiration from, and um, you, know, you had a lot of uh, you had a really cool typography book that you. That you flat and I actually last night, funny enough, I actually found, found my own one. Actually, I'll, I'll bring up on screen shortly. But um, I know you had a really good one too, Rachel, didn't you? That you for those yeah, of you who are quite interested um, in the chat. I actually and I mm. pulled up their website, but um, so this is uh, actual source, which is a design studio. They have um, really nice work. They do a lot of books. This was um, one of this is the it says issue eight new type design. Um, and it's basically just this like really thick book uh, full of different typefaces. Um, it's all printed in one color red. So as you can see, it's kind of somewhat of uh, what inspired a little bit of what we're doing today. Um, mm. but yeah, definitely By the way, you, you, that was awesome because you opened it directly on R. I don't know if that was like a the sticky <laughs> there, but I was like, I was like perfect like time in there. It's just like, boom, look what I made earlier kind of thing. <laughs> Yes, my little, a little that plug. <laughs> and also, actually, on, on that topic of books, I mean, I've, I've also, I mean, this is a big one, actually. Oh, yeah, well. let's see. It's a, a type of, you can see it for the corner, actually. Uh, the type of visual history of typefaces and graphic styles from the 1628 to 1938. Ooh. So you can, it's, I, I feel like typography books are never small. They're, they're going to be big. And yeah, um, right. just putting it out there for anyone in the, in the chat who wants to get some typography books you know that's you know mine and Rachel's recommendation so if you heard any yourself you, you read any you know feel free to yeah, share, share in the chat and put it in there share with us great as well know. great uh always fun to look through just like a very graphic um typographic mm. book you know we love we love type of course we do and actually Cheryl, Cheryl just asked a lovely message so he said hi Stephanie uh my favorite designer when are you doing your next Adobe Live again? Oh. I'd love to see your stream. You are dope. <laughs> That's funny, guys. That was awesome. very talented. So, uh, lovely vibes at the moment. So it's all good. Um, yeah, and again, guys, you know, keep your keep your comments coming. This is great. You know, it'd be good to know, you know, any typography that you may have seen, you know, out and about. And um, I don't know if you fit find the same, Rachel, but when you're out and about, even just going to the, the supermarket or the you know shopping centre, typography for me, it's packaging. It's you know, it's everywhere. So. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool to know, you know, for you guys in the chat, where have you seen some cool type, whether it's out and about, you know, in home, you never know in your in your cupboards. Um, put it out there and we can we can all share. It'd be great to hear. Yeah, even just walking around the city. Um, I think I mentioned that yesterday. There's mm. all kinds of signage and um, you know, wheat paste posters everywhere. And yeah, there's always a lot to uh mm. to look at. I always found like this is gonna sound really even when we when we could sort of you know before lockdown and go to restaurants, I would just get obsessed with typography on the menus. I'd be looking at the type <laughs> and I find myself not even ordered anything yet because I'm just too busy, you know, <laughs> looking at looking at that type. I feel like maybe mo it's maybe some designers do it, maybe not. Yeah. yeah, it's like I don't know what spaghetti bottle is right now. I want to see exactly what the kerning is on, on this type. But um yeah, Lee Lee dedication. Cooper's mentioned. <laughs> exactly. <you know. clears throat> Excuse me. Um so yeah, Lee Cooper's mentioned cupboards, uh, that's a good call. Um Imagine mm -hmm. now we've got people just going to go in their kitchens now and just look at look at typefaces. Yeah. That's we started a it's trend. Everywhere. Rachel. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. It's like, um, did you ever see that movie? Not to go on the whole film tangent again, but um, <laughs> there was a movie. I think it was with Tom Cruise called Twenty Three. It's like Ooh, nice. It was very weird. Um, okay. But he becomes like manically obsessed with the number twenty three, and he sees twenty three. Like everything uh, that he sees can somehow relate to 23 and it's this like obsessive okay. uh anyways it's that's like <laughs> i love is it like different typeface of 23 yeah. is it like different typography of like 23 or is it the same comic sans 23 all over his forehead or just oh gosh no no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh okay way too many menus in comic sans <laughs> 
and Pepper S. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I feel like yeah, Comic Sans like, yeah. kind of like came back and like had a moment last year. <laughs> you know, there was like an Instagram yeah. filter that had, or I, I guess, no, the Instagram <laughs> captions, they're like Comic Sans is an option now. True. That is, that is true. I mean, we can't be like, you know, we can't, we can't disregard any typeface, right? Everyone's got their own soft spot for certain fonts and typefaces. Yeah. And if, if it works for you, it works for you, right? So, uh, don't yeah, discriminate yeah, yeah. on the typefaces. Exactly. <laughs> All good for it. Okay. And, um, I'm loving what you're doing now, actually. With the, you know, again, it's obviously you've got much chunkier, you know, bigger fonts, different shapes and sizes. Obviously, you've got the, you know, top left hand corner, which is quite nice, much smaller font. Um, yeah, so just. Yeah. You're just like optically kind of moving that up. Oh, another thing. Um, so we've got a little quotation mark here. So we are going to use our optical alignment. So basically what that does is that just kicks this quotation mark over a little bit. So we have a nice um, mm. crisp edge there. Just, I mean, it's quite a question. This is a bit of, you no, know, still on, still on, on track for, you know, you know what we're doing now. But just um, in terms of your background, Rachel, with, with design and, and type, I mean, just putting that there, have you always wanted to be a designer or like, you know, work in this space? Is this, was there ever, you want to do something a bit different or so you're very good at what you do in this space? Was there ever a different route that you want to potentially explore or has it always been um, design? I mean, I like didn't even know what graphic design was until I was mm. um, probably like 18, around 18. Um, so no, I didn't really know specifically that that's what I wanted to do. It was something I actually kind of just like stumbled into. Um, mm. and then the university that I went to had a really great design program. So, um, once mm. I got in it, it, it did, it felt, it just felt right. I've, um, I consider myself a pretty visual person. It's, that's like how I, um, learn mm. better. So, um, so yeah, it was, yeah. it. Yeah, just kind of fit for me. Did was did you have like a very linear path, or was it also kind of a stumbling uh, into kind of a thing? Yeah, no, I'm saying I guess like for you know, I think most of us have well, maybe not most, but just have a similar story in a sense that you, for me it was always visual. Like I always mm -hmm. responded well in school, and you know, younger going up as, as something that was visual or color. And I used to do a lot of drawing. I used to like cartoon characters actually. I used oh, to. Cool. I actually wanted to be a, is it caricature? I think that's the right word. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to, to do that potentially as a, that's as a cool. job. I mean, it's never too late, right? But um, but yeah, yeah I just I obsessed it. with drawing and, and like scribbles in your you know, school books and um, Simpson characters, obsessed with Simpson. But yeah, go off piece which, there, but yeah, uh, definitely. Which character is your favorite? I'm actually not super familiar with, I mean, I've, I've watched The Simpsons, but I don't, like, I don't think I could name oh, my Rachel, favorite character. Oh, Rachel, <laughs> um, I know my oh. sister's obsessed with it so I've I, you know I've watched a little bit of it with her yeah well on the topic of like you know type I mean it's still on, on bra obviously your Bart Simpson does a, you know little I think he does the at the intro he does this you know writing on the board you know typeface still in that in that realm uh, so Bart is obviously my favorite and I like Neil okay. House as well because he's, he's geeky and yeah cool um but yeah, yeah there's, there's some good <laughs> ones um okay yeah, I watched. I watched. I did watch some of that with my sister this year, and then um, another one that I got into over quarantine was Jeopardy. Do you, do you ever watch Jeopardy? Okay. No, no, I never heard of that. Um, to... It's just like a classic game show mm. um, trivia. I so it does ring a bell, but actually, yeah, I need to. You would probably. I mean, it's that. yeah, it's, it's been around for a very long time. It's uh, it's a classic. Mm. Brilliant. Uh, we've got Mark actually asking the question. Uh, howdy, uh, how? How do you get that grid going? Um, so this is a bit from the first session, but is there you can just show grids just to show what you're working with, Rachel. Yeah, let's go to uh, our, little, our handy little master page here. So um, I carried some of this from the last zine that I did that we talked about at the beginning. Um, and for that, we had established these 0.25 inch margins all around the edges and then on the inside, um, making it a little bit bigger. So 0.5 inch margins um, in anticipation of maybe putting some page numbers in the middle there later on as like a final detail touch. Um, and then I've just done six columns and I did the gutters at 0.125 inches. And then we have, I believe, eight columns with the same size gutter, 0.125. Um, so that's where, that's kind of like the framework we're playing in. Um, and then yeah. I also have a baseline grid, which I set to four points, um, <clears throat> because the letting of the smallest type that we're using is four. So, um, 
having that kind oh. of common ground throughout as well. Right. It's kind of a anchor point. And for those just a little again heads up for um those who've just you know just tuned in uh we're, you know we're working in indesign uh which is you know very much a, a print or software um and we're working on a typographic zine uh interpreting uh rachel's notes over the past year so obviously if you just joined welcome um and on that topic of actually indesign i mean that this is quite a you know, this is personally one of my favorite sort of programs to work in i don't know if it's the same for you rachel like if you've got a if you've got a favorite out of all the love, three oh, it's more than love three, indesign yeah. it is yeah my main my main squeeze of adobe programs definitely and that's the beauty of it again with um you know just putting out there with, with adobe live and and the behance you can watch a lot of our tutorials you know covering so so many different programs in design uh, illustrator photoshop and, and all of other things as well but um again for those of you not, not used to it you know highly recommend to get on there and um you know trying out some of the tutorials um, and some of the challenges just to get your mind around it and um yeah and obviously to see different works as well because there's a lot of uh cool work on Behance to, to view. So uh, yeah, definitely get on there for some good inspiration. I hope I'm not um, like making everybody dizzy by <laughs> zooming in and out so much. Uh, <laughs> I just, I feel like I always have my finger on the like the Z button. Zoom out, zoom I'm out. I'm just like hovering over Z at all times using the, the space bar is another one of my go-tos. Do you use a tablet at all? Do you use, is it just a mouse? What do you tend to I just your, use a uh, mouse. Um, okay. Definitely not the trackpad. I, mm. that designing on a trackpad is like, oof. Really? Not... Do you know what's weird? I, I, so I yeah, a bit of peace, but I am, um, it's where I used to work uh, in advertising many, many years ago. I remember seeing the designer beside me using a trackpad and thinking, oh uh, back then I was a genius just a few years back. I think mean, that, that looks awesome. And I sort of told myself, I want to learn to use it. And now, I can't stop using it. Like, I really? feel like it's like, yeah, seriously, like it's become like, I, I use the mouse obviously and whatnot, but. Yeah, especially in Illustrator or, you know, creating logos or it's just a bit of freedom with the pen. Yeah. Um, oh, with the, with yeah, the pen, yeah. not, the, not the trackpad. Sorry. Yeah, the tablets okay, or bamboo. Tab you know, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to yeah, separate yeah. the two, actually, then. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I would love to be more fluent in using the tablet. Mm. It's just like, I feel like it's just one of those things you have to, like, set aside the time and just, like, start doing yeah. it. And I've never done that. But no, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, I mean, it seems like a really great tool for a lot of people. Definitely. And there's a few people in the chat sort of mentioning what, what their favorites is. Um, we've got, yeah, Biola saying, yes, InDesign is my favorite. I do love Illustrator. Also keen to learn. Um, so yeah, just on that as well, you know, definitely check out our, you know, um, Adobe Live uh, uh, creative programs as well, which you can do some challenges on to learn up on there too. Uh, we've also got uh, Matteo who's saying, uh, as an Illustrator, using InDesign looks a bit intimidating. Um, I guess it can be some scary, but I guess it's like like anything. You just kind of learn up on it, right, Rachel? I don't yeah, know how you, you just... First around it. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I feel like with all the design programs, you just have to start using it. And that's really yeah. the only way to figure out how to do it. It's uh, it, 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 it can be, I think, very helpful to watch other people design. And, um, mm. you know, it's you can kind of like pick up some tricks that way. Definitely. Um, I mean, just on yeah, that, this, I mean, you guys this, are in the best place for it. Sorry, go on. No, no, um, no I'm just this little little piece of type in the corner here is it's just mm. like not really working so i'm just uh because i don't i don't want all the small type to be just like around the edges which is kind of what's happening so mm. um just bear with just me. on that you, you were saying as well you know about um you know that's quite quite a nice way of actually learning just you know watching tutorials and actually watching like like for you guys on the chat now you know watching you know self design and, and using these programs that's pretty quite uh, especially for those who may be quite new uh, mm -hmm. to using you know any design programs in, in the chat now this is perhaps the best way you can actually learn you know just you know and actually making mistakes i mean that's the whole point right you post to you know make mistakes and then sort of you know make glitches and sort of see how can you work from those so um it's all a learning totally. curve totally we love mistakes <laughs> um okay, uh, we've cool. got ginger marks as well saying um uh, as a book formatter i use indesign the most but i also love illustrator and photoshop too so uh, we've got to give love to that too mm-hmm yeah, I mean, like we were saying yesterday, you know, each one kind of serves its own very specific purpose. So, mm, definitely. Um, gotta respect. Okay, so again, Big I'm just like face. playing with this, our little uh, text wrap uh, kind of awkward gap here. Maybe we bring this over here or something. Um, 
Uh, just, just I think we've got a question actually asking about. So the ty- I know he mentions a few times, but the typography books that we discussed um, mm-hmm. early on. Uh, so yeah, the my one, it's big, big one here. <laughs> it says it's called a type, a visual history of typefaces and graphic uh, graphic styles, um, and it's by published by Tashin, and they do a lot of actually nice typography books. Um, yeah, yeah so definitely books. check that out. And uh, what was your one, Rachel? Again. Um, actual source is who designed it and it's called issue eight new type design um, i actually have their page up here um, nice. so this is their website um, if you go to the shop section i don't i don't think they designed all of these perhaps they did i'm actually not entirely sure but um mm. as you can see just like tons of really well designed mm. um just lovely, lovely books. Just loving the lay- even the layout of how they've kind of <laughs> collated it. It's totally. quite nice on the, on the solid black. It's, I like this. Yeah. This one's this one's really nice. That one stands out. It's also um, I think this is cool too. Having this layered, you know, this kind of uh, what we were talking mm. about with the slight transparency, which they've kind of done with this red block here. Mm. So it just has this kind of effect of something that was like mm. stuck right on top. Um, but yeah, some really yeah. It'd be good to know again, you, really you know, guys stuff. in the chat. You know, where do you get your inspiration from? So you know, we touched on you know, a bit of yesterday and a bit of today. We you know, obviously with Pinterest and, and Behance and you know all these different you know mediums out there and platforms you can get um, inspiration from. But with typography, you kind of feel like yeah, you could just literally you know go in supermarket or just go you know, you know, on, on a bus or you see an advert when you're walking down the street. Um, you know, it's always quite nice to kind of take inspiration from there. So yeah, definitely put in the in the chat. You know, where you get your inspiration from. We'd love to sort of. Uh, have to hear it. Yes. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna kind of like walk away from this spread for a little bit now, um, but I feel like we're getting it to kind of an interesting place. Um, we have this kind of like jumbled words and headlines and, um, you know, a nice um, variety of scale. So yeah, I'm feeling feeling okay about this for now, but we might come back. Mm. Um, Okay, so for this next spread, um, I thought, so the entry here on the left um, just says, strange to think of all the people in their apartments confined to the perimeters of their walls. So I was thinking for this, we could do something, um, like maybe we do like a box or we type it, we do like type on a path and do it in a box. So something that kind of, visualizes this idea of being inside and like kind of confined so let's, restraint yeah let's see what we can do i mean so i have this um this inspiration on the side here so again i think it could be interesting to play with a shape mm. uh, maybe it's just like a square something like super simple that could represent a home or mm. a space that you're staying within um and just on that, when you mentioned, like, I guess for everyone, if a lot of people as well, you know, being at home, probably the most we've ever been before. So I guess this whole Absolutely. idea of working in a, you know, it, for some, it could be a bit of a strain, but for some, actually, it could be a chance to, uh, you know, do a bit of DIY or just to kind of, you know, make yourself a bit more homely or just feel more comfortable in that space. Um, you know, Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have been doing a lot of Garamond for body copy so maybe we do some droop here um i kind of like we've been using it in all caps so maybe here we keep it um Mm. sentence case and i don't know to me this this comment or this entry feels kind of quiet actually so maybe we make it a little bit smaller what happened? I can't see. What happened on that day on uh, in your diary, uh, Rachel, or in your so documented? Yeah, what, what happened on that particular? Oh, day? it's just it was just like a random thought of things ah, okay, like the all the people, like you know, just especially in New York, which mm. it's just so bizarre to think about this like very densely populated area and people are just like stacked on top of each other and everyone's just in their little box, their little cell. <laughs> And yeah, I got you. <laughs> like we're all there together at the same time, but everyone is kind of like tucked away in their little space. So mm-hmm. um, kind of makes you be grateful for the, you know, the green space, right? That we, if, 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 you, if people are fortunate, you know, to have a bit of green space or, you know, if you live near an EC or if you're, you know, just a bit oh, of a 
different variety is quite nice. But I feel like even, I mean, I don't know about um, your experience, but even in New York, there mm. was um, there was a moment where they closed all of the parks for a couple months at the beginning of COVID. Mm. Like it was like, mm. you know, we, it, we still didn't know much about it at that time. And so it was just kind of like, nobody get together. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was kind of, uh, you know, it felt kind of like tragic at the time taking away this mm. like little piece of nature that we had um it's interesting you mentioned it because we, we i think we sort of mentioned yes this like for us as well where where we where we used to live um a lot of our neighbors that we never actually really had a chance to really meet we just saw a lot of them sort of come outside our house and just sit on the curb and we had a guy who just played a guitar and it was quite nice because oh, he nice. played a guitar and literally the whole neighbor was just uh, just listening or if you're in like a it's zoom like a- meeting or a team you just come out and just you know open the door and just listen to him playing the guitar so it felt like a nice community vibe. Private concert. Yeah, definitely. No, that's great. It's like, yeah. Yeah, Lights I feel like the there was kind of thing, a lot yeah. of that at the time. Um, I feel like there was a lot in like Italy. There would be mm. musicians on their balconies. That was like a thing for a minute. Mm. Um, I told I told you out here, everyone was on their roof. It was like all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. that was kind of like you know no one ha- no one really has a backyard here or space. Mm-hmm. So um, you know the roof is kind of this. Mm. You know, just on that space. actually you just you just hit me just reminded me about something quite interesting i saw um i can't remember the name of unfortunately of the designer but photographer i should say but similar to what you're doing now where you're documenting your you know your what you've been throughout throughout the year for a typographic um mm-hmm. this gentleman did it via photography but what he did cool. is he got pictures of people who obviously because you couldn't see your loved ones or you couldn't hug them or see them it was basically mm-hmm. shots of people through their window sills or window ledges oh that's very cool um and you made like almost like a zine based on that so like in the way where you're doing yours through type he did it through photography but it's quite cool to see the different variations you could document you know depending on what your craft is or depending on what you're interested in um, absolutely yeah, yeah i feel like there was actually even i had an entry in here um that at one point i felt like it was just like couriers and photographers were like the only people outside <laughs> <It's> like, every <laughs> photographer was out there yeah. like trying to get pictures and definitely um, or yeah, influencers no, or whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's a, you know, it was, mm. a, a, you know, a traumatic thing to happen, but there was mm. definitely some, you know, really creative um, things that came out of it, so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we sort of touched on it yesterday, you know, this this whole idea of kind of bringing people together and, you know, design, you know, in, in a way, you know, it kind of does that, you know, it brings people together and, you know, mm-hmm. we're able to articulate what we want to get across visually. So, you know, even for, you know, those in the chat today, and it'd be good to know, um, you know, if you ever want to work on, you know, something like this potentially and any ideas that you may have or, you know, put it out there. I think we had a mixture yesterday of some students, some people who were, you know, working full time, um, you know, good to know where you're at and, you know, what is your current situation and you know, put it in the chat love to know and um yeah just think of ways you know you can also document you know you don't have to be uh a designer to necessarily document what you're doing it could just be you know for the sake totally. of wanting to document it um so yeah um okay so i'm changing my mind i think i'm going back to garamond here but one thing i forgot with garamond um they have the font has very nice uh small caps so mm. that's like a whole other um distinguished look that we can kind of add to our typographic palette here mm. i'm loving the cue on quarantine actually the way oh, it kind right? of like curves yeah it's very that's nice. like a it's just like, solid whoop. swirl <laughs> yeah very nice yeah it's very classic um so i don't know this is you know this is like looking kind of fancy now but mm. uh so again how do we like look at this idea of walls is it maybe like a smaller square is it Maybe we can make it like off center. You mentioned like people, I guess where you're based in New York, it's, it's quite condensed and, you know, uh, buildings or flats sort of stacked on top of each other. I don't know whether that's mm-hmm. something maybe you could play with in terms of the the stacking of shapes or that's potentially. True. Just, I think um, that's true. Yeah, I like that idea. Mm. So maybe we, I feel like we need, okay, let's see. Maybe it's like stacked or... I'm seeing like Jenga now. I don't know why. My brain is still like <laughs> the side of like a Jenga block. It's just, yeah. Uh, well off base. Mm. And just um, just on this, obviously we were experimenting still and, you know, we're kind of getting to that finalization of, of the design. But um, question I wanted to ask you, Rachel, as well, is um, obviously 
through your work and the work we're doing today with mixing of shapes and colors and typography out of those three things shapes color typography is there anything that you'd like to experiment a bit more or that you find okay i could have a you know a field day just really having fun if if any of those three uh that's um, tricky to pick mm. but um i feel like I don't know. Type is just, I feel like it's never ending. It's this kind of like infinite mm. world that there's so many different things you can do with it. There's so many different typefaces. Um, so if I had to pick one, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, that's actually, that would be interesting to do like maybe a book that was like all shapes or a book that's all yeah, colors definitely. or a book that's all type. You know, mm. there's just so much you can do with each of those that could actually be kind of like a cool series. I feel like you could literally, like you said, like document your year, break it into four parts and literally one part's color, one part's shape. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And just interpret it in, in a way where it just, you know, it works for you in, in that in that space. Totally. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just, they're, they're all like different ways to express a feeling. So mm, mm. do you have a, do you have a favorite of the three or? You know, I love, for me, I think we touched on a bit of screen printing yesterday. It's like color. Oh, yeah, I like, yeah. I like overlapping color and, and then almost like, you know, two colors overlapping will create a third and, and, and so forth. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess obviously with, with designers and what we do, you know, the three kind of work in sync and it depends on what you're working on, but you know, they, they kind of tend to work in harmony. But yeah, I mean, if I was given a, a brief where, you know, have a bit of fun with it, I love when I create a print, say for example, where people start recognizing things through color or they'll get familiar with a particular section because of the color. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, yeah, I like to go through that. Um, cool. ooh, we've got some... A uh, question from Jessica Tia. Who are some creators, Rachel, that you admire? And then where do you find your inspiration from? Which we covered it about yesterday. But but more importantly, yeah, who do you find uh, inspiring? If, yeah, yeah. Who do you find I know. Uh, we got, I think we got this question yesterday. I don't know. I don't really have like... Yeah. Hard, isn't it? <laughs> one person. It's like things and places and people the world. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> the world. Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. actually. It's, it's true. It, no, it's true. It's true. Definitely. Yeah. It's... Um, <laughs> I don't know, I mm. think you can, I think anything is inspiration if you mm. look hard enough. Uh, just, I mean, no, yeah, I, I think anything can be interesting if if you want it mm. to be. I'm liking the text wrap around the, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe that's <laughs> like, maybe that kind of visualizes it more than just a box. Because, mm. yeah, you kind of get the idea you, you, you're in a box kind of exactly. you know, through the shape of the text, but uh, yeah. So let's go with that. Mm. It's weird. I don't know why my, my brain's thinking this. So like I had a conversation the other day with a friend saying, you know, about this idea of you know, being constrained and, and refined and, you know, in, into a tight space. Um, obviously, nature has kind of excelled and thrived whilst we've all been locked in. I know certain totally. countries have had these same thing. So I feel like even what we're doing now with, I feel like the outside is like, you know, nature and, and animals kind of, you know, experiencing the outside and where the actual ones from the inside um i think i'm <laughs> right. quite abstract now i don't know but yeah <laughs> yeah i, like I just it. saw that in my brain thought of thought of that um yeah <laughs> i don't know if i'm liking this um maybe it's <clears throat> no i feel like nature was kind of like reaping the benefits of the pandemic for a while too you know just less mm. people traveling and driving and yeah there's pollution um, and yeah exactly sure. like i remember yeah. you know towards the beginning um it was like the venice canals were like clear water yeah. and people like the residents could see animals in the water for the first time in like mm. years no definitely it kind of relates to your, your key words as well that you picked out when you've been you were sharing us at the beginning of this the um i think messy was in there as well and like oh, i think that was one of your key words like yeah, all I feel like those keywords that we can all can kind of relate to at least one of those words, right? In terms of how our year went or what we've seen, um, which is why this book, you know, just feels very relevant and very, you know, quite nice to do. And actually, a question I was going to ask you again, Rachel, was obviously this is an ongoing project that you, you know, you did last year and, and obviously this year. Do you see yourself kind of doing this even when hopefully COVID's a bit of a distant memory? Do you still want to continue doing like ongoing projects and like based on this, like documenting? Yeah. Um... So I've been writing something every day for actually 2017 might have been the first year. So it's been, mm -hmm. what does that make it? Four years now. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, at, for the foreseeable future, it's something that I see myself continuing to do. Mm. Um, as far as the zine part, you know, I, I, I skipped the last three years. The la I mean, the last one that I made was for Adobe Live. So it's, you know, it's nice to have an excuse to put something together. Um, so maybe mm. down the road, you know, maybe there's not one for every year. Maybe there's a couple gap years, but having some yeah. sort of like collection. Um, it's just, you know, it's cool when it becomes something tangible and definitely something that you can hold on to. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of liking the way this, the Garamond italic is working with the shape. It feels, um, see as well we've got some really nice so one so Biola said a, a lovely thing actually so one good thing for her is uh she's discovered these streams at the beginning of COVID so you know that's that's actually quite quite nice to know um again obviously everyone's got their own way of how they kind of you know came about with Adobe and and, and these streams but you know, knowing that at the beginning of you know COVID that you found this is, is quite a nice one and um and just to encourage again for viewers if it's your first time or you know maybe you come over quite often you know that's great um you know Adobe Live even when we're offline you know it's still going and you know you can go on the streams and you can go on you know via youtube and behance and you know, keep up to date that way so um so yeah definitely sort of find you know what what you really want to get into and i'm sure you can find it on a uh, on our channel so uh yeah that's a really nice comment by that's, that's cool to hear yeah i think i mean another thing you know we can't we can't attend events or uh, any sort mm. of performances or anything like that so i think you know for entertainment value and also just connecting mm. with other people you know things like this it is nice to just mm. um, you know see other people in their space and just have that like interact like some level of interaction is i think we're Definitely. all very um you know needing that right now i mean like we connected right obviously free i mean you're in new york and i'm in london that that's right. obviously we spoke before you know for the streams and um you know getting to know your practice and you know, how you work and you know we're both very much in this space as well of editorial so yeah, I mean, this is in itself is, is quite cool just to meet other creatives and, you know, connect that way too. So, Completely uh, agree. Really cool. Um, uh, we've got a okay. question for you, Jessica, as well. Uh, sorry, just a question from Jessica for Rachel. Uh, where, do, where do you tend to find your fonts, Rachel? That's what uh, Jessica T's asking. Um, and do you have a favorite font at the moment? Um, I, I feel like fonts are just kind of something that you... I'm, I feel like I'm just like continuously collecting fonts, whether it be through coworkers or friends or different foundries that I follow. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of like a list of places. Um, but yeah, there's some like very great foundries out there that only design really beautiful typefaces. Um, I think like for this book, um, I wanted to use Garamond because it was just like a more classic traditional typeface that I think I sometimes tend to overlook. You know, sometimes we get, it's easy to get caught up in all the, um, you know, newer typefaces that are a little bit more experimental, mm. but sometimes it's nice to kind of go back to just like a very classic uh, mm. typeface that's been around for a while. But I think we talked about yesterday, Founders Grotesque was one that I yeah. I had been favoring for a while. I mean, you know, I still... I still mm. appreciate that one. Um, you were saying Brandon Grotesque is yours, right? That's right, that, that's my, uh, yeah, that's my that's my Achilles heel. Uh, it's funny because <laughs> on that topic of font as well, I, I, there's a website, what's the font.com. I don't know if you've, yes. you've heard of that, but that is such an awesome site because again, you know, if you, and I, so many times I can't remember names of fonts when I see them and they're awesome. You just take a picture of it and you can just upload it and it will tell you um, what the font is or it will give you suggestions if it can't find exactly what that one is. Um, so for, again, for anyone who's in the chat who wants to give a bit more information about fonts and, you know, that's quite a nice website to, to browse on what's the font.com. Um, I know I've used that a lot of times with, with jobs that I've done just to try and um, yes, I've used pinpoint that one what as that well. font is. Um, another one that I mentioned mm -hmm. yesterday is fonts in use is another mm -hmm. great resource. Um, it's kind of this like visual page that mm -hmm. it just shows, um, different applications of fonts and then it breaks down what the font is and then you can click on it and it will take you to the source to buy it. So um, Brilliant. that's definitely worth checking out. And just on that topic as well, just and with fonts as well, like obviously with fonts.adobe as well, there's a lot of fonts on there as well that I feel like, again, when you're on the programs, it, it's just like a world, right? Of just different fonts that you could literally play around with. So um, yeah, all these different, so, you know, yeah. resources that you can get it from, but uh, yeah, pick your, pick, basically pick your, pick your uh, option really, because there's a lot to, to go through. 
Um, Ra- a question for you, Emma, Rachel. Again, uh, for you, Emma, uh, is uh, Rachel, do you have a secret uh, on how to organize your font gallery? Mm, um, I feel like every place that I've worked has a different system. Um, but for my personal collection, I, I just have um, a folder of all the different typefaces, mm-hmm. and you know, I try to keep it as organized as possible. But um, it's kind of it's kind of just like one big folder. There's you know, I, I, w- I would like <laughs> to say that I have it like organized by style or something like that, but I uh, I do not. So. You mean it's not alphabetical order? You mean you mean it's not like? A... <laughs> yeah, I mean you know the co- the computer does uh, some of that for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, do you do you have a good system that? No, can... I mean I, I would like to say that. I mean I've got a hard drive and literally on that hard drive is yes. just just fonts, just because okay, I know it's nice. just like when I when I'm in dying need I just I just plug it in and I can you know, pick and well, choose. But um, and yeah. they accumulate so quickly, you know. It's totally yeah, totally. Do you have yeah, like yeah, certain it's... foundries that you follow or? Um, like back to that type question. Mm. Yeah, no, sure. Um, it's funny because I think that, I mean, now, I mean, I do spend a lot of time on, I guess, on social media and I sort of tend to find a lot of things, you know, on, on I think we touched on yesterday, but on Instagram and, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm forever bookmarking things that I, that I see or, um, you know, when I do go out and, and, and see adverts, I'll just take pictures. Um, you know, that for me, I've got a whole photo dedicated just to, you know, inspiration that I find or font. So, Totally. I just want to get home, I just upload it. And um, I think that's the key, just to try and keep yourself afloat creatively by just being inspired, whether it's on Behance or Adobe or other platforms. Um, and then to create a folder for yourself and just when you need them, you just dive into them. Totally. Um, so this is, I jumped back to winter, so we're in winter, winter again. Um, you know, sometimes for me, like I was just like kind of like fumbling around on that last page. So sometimes I just kind of need to like walk away and work on a different page for a little bit and then kind of revisit mm-hmm. and, you know, tweak things that way. Um, but for this page, so this is winter. These were just, again, some that we had talked about yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, like I had pulled some inspiration like this. And again, I'll kind of um, click through my reference folder here really quick. Um, just some different ways that we can use type. I mean, the, the, these references are quite specific to typography and layouts because um, I do think it's nice sometimes to have mm. have references that aren't just design. But um, for this, it's just these are just kind of like to get me thinking of okay, different ways we can use type or layer type. Um, maybe we outline some type, uh, mm. having you know this kind of like crooked crammed in there we liked this like very like fluid yeah. um and then the sans serif so yeah these are just mm. different ways i thought something with something like this could be interesting um you know mm. you can kind of like fake these pages folding and turning so maybe that's something that we could do mm. again i feel like that could be like a text wrap kind of a thing like we put mm. a text wrap like a square here or something but even that playfulness of the actual paper itself, that that was quite cool, right? I don't oh, know, right. I just got like origami kind of vibes and just, you can yeah. actually, obviously down the line if we went to print and we actually, you know, could do something I with mean, that, quite cool. Even down to how they've laid out this type like this, you know, to like fit mm. perfectly in that little triangle and this here, it's- Totally, yeah. That's really nice. Awesome. Um, so yeah, again, just looking for different ways to layer and express type. Um, so here again, is that kind of- uh, Nice. Like, yeah. You know. It makes you want to think what is behind that blue, right? But <laughs> I was gonna give you a taste Intriguing. of it just for now. <laughs> I also really love this. I mean it's kind of what we were doing on that spring spread, but mm. um yeah, it's just kind of it's like yeah. it's it's messy but it feels organized at the same time. It's nice. Definitely. Definitely. So yeah, again, just like clicking through some of these. For this spread specifically, I thought Maybe it's a little, just like a little bit more straightforward and mm. maybe we're just like using two different sizes. Maybe it's this uh, 20 point type and then maybe we do like a 12 or something that's a little bit mm. closer. And then this could be 12 as well. And just, uh, just for maybe anyone who's just, sort of, you know, just tuned in and just joined us and what you're seeing now, obviously we're in the... Uh, in the process with uh, art director and graphic designer Rachel working on a lovely typographic zine, uh, which is basically documenting her 
uh, experience that she's experienced throughout this year. Um, so we've got some different lovely stories of her and we're just thinking of different ways we could uh, experiment that in a nice typographic format. So if you've just joined, uh, yeah, big welcome. Welcome. Um, it's funny seeing yourself design something too. Like I feel like I noticed <laughs> that I... I like, tilt my head a lot. Oh yeah, it, do you know when you did that? I feel like I, I need to tilt as well. Like it's just yeah, like, like a, almost like an instant mirror, isn't it? Like, it's so that. weird. I don't know why. And I feel like so many designers do that. It's like oh, we all we all do it. We all yeah. You know, you've made a designer when your tilt is at an angle, or maybe you can just like you can tilt in public and it's not a big deal, right? You just uh, you're comfortable just a, with the a tilt. Shameless, yeah, exactly. <laughs> shameless tilt. Shameless tilts. Uh, we've got uh, Sebastian saying hello from Argentina. Uh, so again, we've got some uh, a lot of different people in different countries, which is which is great. So they've hey, all Sebastian. tuned in to uh, see your typography zine, Rachel, which is great. So let's see. What if we just like turned this or did something like that? So and then we put this little heart, even though it's not totally in chronological order. And just to uh, just to say for those who maybe just joined as well, we've also got uh, in the next I'll say twenty five minutes or so our artist spotlight. So that's gonna be quite exciting to uh, yes. delve into that. So uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned for uh, for that. But now we're obviously still in that process with, with Rachel, and we're getting a real taste and a real flavour for your creative uh, a creative mindset and how you know how you tend to work, which is uh, which is always cool to see how designers kind of you know work on on type and on their programs. Totally. It's so different for everybody uh, Anika said a really amazing comment so she said that uh the tilt is like putting your paintbrush in your tea whilst painting <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it defines you I love that that's that's, that's very true it is a yeah uh, we've all got our own like you know different quirks right as designers it's just totally. the nature I think we all in general not just designers but yeah more so designers perhaps um and that's why, yeah, it, it's it's an awesome profession to be in, right? Well, maybe biased because we're designers, but again, it's, it's something biased, that. Yeah, it's, um, exactly. No, I agree. It's Expressive. I, I quite enjoy it. Hmm. Um, okay, so I'm kind of I'm like kind of feeling this. Um, I like how it's all the same type size, but we were kind of playing with you know the structure and the forms and how it's just kind of these kind of like mashup of different thoughts and things um mm. and then i like this kind of like heart stamp in the middle here um that was just an entry from valentine's day um about the empire state um so yeah i'm thinking we can kind of leave this for now um and then winter so mm. i was thinking it could be really cool here to have this script knock out over the the bold here so we get a little mm. um there's like more of an interaction between the two and i was gonna ask the chat if anyone had any like i know we can take it into illustrator and play with the pathfinder that way and break it up like that um but i didn't know if there was like an easy way to do it in indesign like i was thinking there could maybe be some sort of effect that we could do but all the ones that i played with like here exclusion you mm. get it you get it a little bit but then it makes this black or it makes the white up here gray mm. which is kind of funky okay so i guess yeah because there's so many different effects isn't there on, on indesign just to kind of ex explore explore through um it just depends on which which way but yeah like rachel said obviously any any for those of you maybe who've used or again even if you used it through the uh adobe challenges it'd be good to know if you if you use that particular tool if there's anything you could uh <laughs> On the play, we'd we'll love to hear your uh, if we hear your thoughts on it. I mean, something that we could do is again play with the opacity of both of these. Mm. So you know, it could be something like that. But I think you know, since we're doing that on the other spread, um, it'd be cool to do something else. So I think mm. what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna try this Pathfinder right here. Almost. Okay, so that yeah, it's one of those ones where I guess with Illustrator you can um and a bit of Photoshop, I guess, as well. Actually, you can if you were say working with um shapes and type, 
uh, sorry, imagery, I should say, and, and type, you could actually wrap around, say, for example, a T around a, an image or, you know, your eye in winter could wrap around the solid eye underneath. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's almost like hugging it in a way. Um, yeah, no, I think that'd be... Which, uh, yeah. So but, I, just kind uh, of, I, mean, I kind of just did this in like a cheaty way. Um, <laughs> so I just did like the Pathfinder X But I think, you know, like something like this is, uh, I think it's, I think it could be quite interesting. Um, mm. You know, like another thing we had looked at, um, I do still think this is really nice, just highlighting one or two letters. So mm. um, I'm just going to bring this down in size just a little bit. So I was going to say just to the R feels a, a bit little, more. Exactly. Get that curve, right? Perfect. A little bit of that R. Otherwise, we've got wind tip, right? Wind tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that season, but sounds cool. And I mean, we should we should probably be minding um, where the spine falls here. Mm. Um, you know, we don't want words like we talked about yesterday, the type getting mm. lost um, in that crease. So anyways, just for again, I I'm gonna say, um, just for those in the chat as well, you can see, I mean, you made a really good point there, Rachel, about having, you know, things in the crease, just so you've got type either side really clear so that you know when we go to print we don't have anything that sort of gets lost in that in that middle middle part um middle gutter so uh, yeah no good shout um okay so now i'm kind of revisiting this intro page so right now we have the cover and then we open to the title page which we're just going to keep a nice um black and white simple title and then mm -hmm. how can we play with this page um I think we I want to I think it'd be cool to use this page to just kind of outline the prompt which was to write something every day um, but how can we kind of layer this make it um, make it interesting um, and then again I have my little pasteboards here like I, I was saying mm. um, you know we have this idea of write something every day but maybe we also you know plug in some sort of um, kind of more like, you know, something about the process or something mm. that's like a little bit more emotional. So I think- I just thought actually it could be, I mean, obviously we had a bit more time, but it could be quite nice to, um, I mean, this is for when you maybe want to do this, you know, even after after Adobe hours, but you know, even actually written hand, like handwritten stuff and yeah, then scanning it I, in, that could be quite nice. Um, I was, yeah. yeah, I was thinking that could be really cool too. Mm. Um, so I think I'm going to keep, so on the front, we have the really big script and then on the next page, we'll have this really big script. So maybe here we go, we introduce our Druk. And I think this could be more of like a small little, oh, not that small. Um, like maybe it's even kind of a little like side note at the bottom here, like a little disclaimer. I've got a few questions for you actually as well, um, Rachel. So sure. um, what's the script font that you're, that you're currently using? Uh, that's from Stephanie. Looks so nice, she said. So this is Dolcetto, is the name of this serif. Um, I'm actually not sure which foundry or how old it is, but yeah, like a great it is. Gatsby sort it's, of feel, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's like very kind of like classic elegant. Um, mm. And again, it had it has nice numbers. The last one did not have the best numbers, so. You'll like, find that with, with fonts as well, like it, it's it's almost like not rare, but you might find perfect lettering, but then the numbers just don't add up or it's just totally like, oh. yes. <laughs> or when the numbers, I mean, when the numbers really good, I feel like you notice yeah. that um, another mm. little tiny type uh, <laughs> little type detail is when a font has really nice fractions. That was something mm. that I used on a project last year. and. I don't know. Something about the fractions were just really nice. <laughs> Love that. Let's see. I bet I bet Garamond has a good one. Let's look in here. So if we do like 
onto our glyphs. I'm like glyphs, I was gonna say glyphs is like that in itself is mm. like a whole world of just like discovery, right? <laughs> when you're another, in the glyph panel. Um, another one that I found recently is like the Wingdings font. And it's just like ah, all yeah. symbols. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are pretty fun to play with too. So yeah, the glyphs, uh, the glyphs can have some really nice kind of like mm. tucked away, um, you know, characters and mm. like that. So let's see if, um, just to show you all an example, a nice little fraction if we have it. Look at this, this one has so many. Yeah, there's a lot of things happening now, which is... So like here, cool. here's a fraction. This one, it's all right. Fuck, oh, yeah. It's like, meh, it's okay. I forget though, the one, I forget the one that I had that I, it was just, a, it was mm. a lovely little fraction. We've got, um, actually, we've got a, uh, yeah, Wingdings is actually, yeah. <laughs> but I just said I love Wingdings, which is uh, yeah. a good one. Wingdings is fun. Um, I was actually thinking like maybe here, what if we do mm. a little bit of that, um, like fake turning of the page that we saw. Oh yeah, like the, you mean like the curl of the sort of paper you mean? Or? Yeah. So yeah, like, just an angle. Nice. Like, Something kind of like that, and then we could have the type like bleeding off of it a little bit. Yeah. So we've got a good question actually from Monique. Um, this is both of us actually. So uh, she's asked Rachel and Kieran, are you both participating in the thirty-six day of type? In the what? In the uh, in the thirty-six days of type. I mean, I don't think I actually know, but but I'm I'm assuming it's like every day you do a different typeface. Let me know if I'm wrong, and Eagle, just so you let us know what that is. But do you do you know what that is? The uh, Thirty-six day of type. I don't believe. I don't believe <laughs> so. Um, yeah, let's give us a little more. Says, let us know what it is because it sounds it sounds awesome. I, like I want to get involved in that. Um, and for, again, for anyone who doesn't know what it is, you know, feel free if you if you do know what it is, obviously let it know in the in the group. But um, if it is what I'm thinking of, the idea of you know exploring different typefaces every day, then I mean that sounds awesome. I gotta have fun it with does. that. Um, oh yeah, Nika said that's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, so that's so that's what good is to it? know. So yeah, so the well, I assume it's the idea of uh, for thirty six days you create a different typeface. Uh, you or you play around one. with different type. Do you create one, Anika? Let, let us know, Anika, what what exactly um, that involves. Um, we get to get to know actually um, on that topic of uh, type. <clears throat> okay, so I think you know something is something interesting is happening here. It feels still maybe a little unfinished like we could come in and like add some layers mm. to it later on but um i don't know there's something interesting happening here like maybe we put this um like in the back somewhere because you had one i think you had one of your inspirations where it was like so it was yeah. just yeah exactly creeping creeping in like, the back i was gonna say just enough that you might be able to get a word or like a sentence or yeah um, um i it. think like, i don't know if it's weird if we just like repeat what's said here but that's kind of nice also because then you don't need to read it because it's already on this page so yeah exactly um maybe we do something like that i don't know i think that adds nice. you know it kind of adds this textural um layered like element that. and then also on the last one that I did, I did something kind of like that on the intro page um, right here. Mm. So I just have like the type in the background and then a square on top with that, um, which I think is kind of a nice little hack. Oh, definitely, it's nice. Even the contrast of that page was, was brilliant, the, the the dark and the white. So I'm um, really, really liking that. Yeah, it was really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's a, I mean, you know, one thing that's really great about print is you can make these physical layers, but, you know, if you're confined to something like this, where it's just digitally printed, you know, kind of like an inexpensive route, um, mm. you know, there are these kind of layered techniques that you can kind of fake. Definitely. There's so many little tricks that we can, we can, I think, yeah, we've actually learned quite a lot, actually, throughout this whole process for the next, you know, for the past um two days of you know how you kind of go about you know type on a page and, and different tricks that you could learn um you know using these using these programs to to find what you want to create um and also just on that topic we've got so we're going into about 10 minutes until we do our um oh, wow. artist spotlight so i mean time has gone so fast right but, i know um, but yeah but yeah but it's been good again just to see like the you know exploration of you know how you've gone about 
doing this and, and find the reasons. Hopefully, you know, you guys are in the chat have had a you know bit of a journey of us from from yesterday up until yes. today. Um, so yeah, it's let's keep it going for I think next ten minutes, and then we can jump into uh, artist spotlight, which is definitely a good one. So you don't want to miss that one. Don't want to miss it. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just deleting our kind of scrap pages that we had created yesterday. Um, trying to decide if I want to save this as a new name or just kind of save over what we have and let it be what it is. I'm going to just save it. That's a question actually for a designer. Do you, are you a save V1, save V2 or just like yeah. a different? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do do a lot of that. Um, okay. But for something like this, I think it's mm. like we've been saying, it's just kind of more about the process. So exactly, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like I need to overthink this and like leave an extra mm. file that I could like dig back into and second guess something. So I think mm. um, for this, it's nice to just go with it. For fun and yeah, definitely. You're in a, we're in a safe space, so we can definitely yeah. uh, <laughs> have fun with that. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely been guilty of. Uh, you know, well, changing names to just random names when you're in a rush, right? Or a deadline, but just oh, trying right. to find a method and actually just keep it clean and just, you know, yeah, V1, V2 and so forth. <laughs> okay, so I think maybe now we can just kind of like take a moment and step back and kind of flip through everything and kind of reevaluate what's left, um, what we need to work on. I feel like we're feeling good about the cover. We've figured out a way mm. to get our script in there. Um, and then here we have our nice little clean breather title page and then we've just created this little um you know kind of like illusion of a page turning but with our prompt to write something every day and then we have our little kind of disclaimer on the side here about you know creating something is always more important than the result so this like expressive quality then we jump into winter again i think this mm. is something um we could come back to and add some little elements to make it just like a little bit more layered and a little bit more finished. Um, maybe it's like adding in the months or just like a page number, but you know, I think there is a little bit of room for that still here. Um, this again is just bringing together different entries, um, kind of like how this one turned out. And then, you know, kind of having this layered shape kind of just smacked on top of the type there. Mm. Um, and then we have spring, which we talked about as kind of this chaotic moment of the year. This is unfinished sketch, sketch. Um, and then some more content that we can work with. Um, so I did, I did go through and kind of work through some of what I think could work for summer. Um, so I liked this, you know, Last summer, some words that I wrote down, you know, it was kind of like a very loud and emotional summer. There was the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement, um, and you know, the social uprising that followed the George Floyd killing. So I thought, you know, we can kind of echo some of what was happening there. So I liked the idea that this could look kind of like a protest sign, or it's you know, it's something that's um, a little bit loud in nature. Mm. So I think something like that could be interesting. Um, and then here I just have, you know, the day that the killing happened. And then um, some of these headlines, you know, at least in New York, there was kind of this like constant hum of helicopters. You know, there was all this talk mm. of using, you know, military and there was this like curfew in place. So, you know, it was a very um, kind of, emotional time for for everybody and you know so mm. i think that's uh a way we can kind of talk on that so i liked how this you know just kind of like keeping these as more of like headlines um and then again just having this kind of like loud um interruption in the year mm. talks on some of that um so then here we get into more of like summary things um again i think you know this is something that we need to revisit need to mm. work through some of this type here we've got our shapes and then fall i was thinking um fall was a little bit 
slower. It was kind of when the second surge happened, you know, I, at least here things kind of like were open for a little bit in the summer and like people were outside mm. and then it kind of like closed down again and people retreated back in. Um, so like I was thinking even something like this, like a really simple thing we could do um, is if we just had to be like, <laughs> all. <laughs> What I like about it as well, like every page just has its I mean, I, that's pretty much how every month has gone, right? Cause we've had to just take it month by month because of how mental things are. Just every page feels bespoke. And um, which is, which is, yeah, in a way that's kind of how we've had to treat this year, each, each, well, yeah, so each month. Um, totally. So I can see what you've done, what you've done over each year spreads. It's really nice. Um, and then in the fall too, we also have obviously the election, which was a very huge moment. Mm. Um, so yeah, there was just like so many major things that happened last year. Um, and then we have our nice little appendix of, I wonder how many words are in here. Let's let's look. But so that's quite nice though, cause you've got, again, we, we sort of touched on it um, earlier, but obviously every page you've got a lot of things happening with the color and, and, the, and the fonts. And then obviously you've got the very back where they like say it feels like an appendix, but actually if you want to just have a real strategic way of going through what's actually happened you can just find that at the back so i like how you've got the the blend of the of the you know the yin and the yang i.e the the inside spreads and then the back which yeah, is much yeah. more structured so something that yeah just like more expressive and then also kind of paired with mm. this like very informative um mm. so anyways uh looking here we have thirty-seven thousand three hundred and forty-four words in our appendix so quite a, a lot, lot. <laughs> don't we even cool like i guess if obviously if you had you know Oh, there's no option like a gatefold. I feel like you could do like a gatefold of actually, mm. um, you know, of those um, of those ascending. Uh, that would be columns. very cool. Mm. Or even um, like something I've seen in print and I've actually been able to do is like a smaller booklet within a booklet. So it's kind of this like yes. Easter egg, and then we have like a smaller size on the inside. That sounds cool. Um, Okay, so kind of just like going back through this. So I feel like so we have like right here, I'm gonna. And just for again, for those in, in the uh, chat as well, hopefully, you know, you've had a real um, insight into into this whole process from when we first started from, you know, certain document, looking at our inspiration and actually seeing these fonts come to life and, and seeing, you know, all of Rachel's um, experiences gonna have come to fruition through the type that she's explained ex experimented with so um yeah it's been a it's been a cool journey rachel man i mean <laughs> time's gone so quick already but um it has yeah it, it's been really cool to see it all come through um so yeah kind of liking that uh, <clears throat> okay this is what i thought one that we could do so one of the things I had written was today is one of those days that feels like your life is on loop and mm. I'm hoping other people can relate to this. Uh, it's just, you know, one of the words that I had to describe 2020 was monotonous and, you know, when you're living and working and eating and sleeping in the same space all the time, it can get a bit um, repetitive. Mm. So... I thought it could be a good um, use of something kind of like this hypnotic swirl here. So we're just gonna. I'm worried you're gonna like, uh, you know, come on T and just literally get spiraling around that and just try to get some sort of <laughs> hypno, hypno toad sort of, uh, yeah, mind's that. Um... <laughs> And again, just just for those in the chat, we were just saying, you know, we're pretty much coming to that to that point now where, um, you know, it's it's been you know such an awesome journey to sort of see you know this process and how we've kind of come through from from start to you know to finish, and you know even after this, you're going to still do a bit more. And you know, the journey of this as well, which is great, is that it's it's very much experimentative. So you know, there was no definitive point to this in a, in a way where you know it's very much you want to document it and have fun with it. Um, so hopefully, you guys in the chat have you know experienced that with two of us um and yeah should we just do maybe a quick rundown just before we maybe get into uh the other spotlight of what we did from day one and, and day two just as a little uh yeah like a little recap, recap. Of yeah, course. yeah definitely 
Um, awesome. So, so we, we should run through that now, is what we're saying? Yeah, I think it's a good bit of time. So I say, so for day one, obviously we, well, yeah, we, we touched on, you know, we, we created a document, we did a bit of visa research, you know, experimenting and then, you know, you can see on the spreads now we're looking at, you know, it's a sense of experimentation with different things we, we worked with. And then obviously today we did a lot more, you know, finalizing the layouts and, and kind of just getting a bit more, you know, clarity where we want to go with things. But I guess this whole journey was just, you know, to be experimenting, right? And to to have fun with it. So it wasn't for Absolutely. a client, it was it was for you. So um yeah, I mean how do how do you feel the whole process Rachel has gone from from yesterday to today? Um it's been good. I obviously, you know, you always like wish you can get further with something, but um I think we've made a pretty good dent in it. It's um you know, all the pieces are there. It's just a matter mm. of kind of finishing up those last remaining layouts. Um that we talked about you feel like you could definitely like you know once it's all done and you're you're super happy with it and it's looking good like for those in the chat you might you know get on the behance profile um people can actually follow on and actually see how it's come from our two-day session right up until when it's you know it's completed so um so yeah definitely follow and we'll, we'll, we'll show you shortly as well um rachel's behance and you, you know guys can follow up on that um and yeah i mean it's it's been a awesome ride so uh, should we get into uh, the artist spotlight? I think we're Let's in that. do it. I'm I'm that. So um, awesome. So I am going to show you now who we have. Uh, so yeah, just a bit of background for just a bit of background for uh, for those uh, who don't know about the artist spotlight. Uh, it's a segment of um, Adobe Live where we celebrate creatives in the community. Um, and today we're going to be celebrating uh, artist and graphic designer uh, Agar Wall, based in New Delhi, India. So we've got uh, her page, uh, which um, yeah, I mean, it's some really cool stuff. Rachel, can you uh, yeah, you can you can see. But um, I mean, what's kind of drawn you straight away from from what you're saying? Because I've got a few, but I'd love to hear what what you're what have you kind of you know going towards. Um, one of the first things the that I was attracted to was this straight in the middle here, this um, like silver pitcher, and then the drawing next to it, uh, oh, like one wow. down and over under the bunny. Oh uh, yeah, this one. Yes. Cool. Let's have a little. Let's have a go through there. Let's have a little. Little go through. Hmm. Yeah, this these is are really awesome. Nice. So are these. So what does it say at the top there? Are these? Um... So we've got hair. Uh, the goal was to practice okay. light and shadows on still objects, uh, Adobe Fresco, uh, and showcase the process uh, on Bahar's live stream. The process was divided into three phases, stating from easy to a higher difficulty level for each phrase for demonstration purposes. Yeah, these are great. Yeah, I love, I think it's really cool too that it's on like a gray background. So when you have those mm. white highlights. Um, That's really nice. It's just like a nice little contrast. You, and you like get the real like texture as well, right? Totally. Like, and really like nice. even like the little droplets on the leaves. Mm. Can we play one of these videos? Is this like a process? Yeah, video? let's have a look at it, definitely. Let's do that. It just makes us want to do a bit more live drawing now as well, which is which is cool. Say, we can yeah. have a play of that. So this is great. Yeah, I'd love to know cool. again what pencils she used as well, like what what mediums as well, right? Right. Yeah, this is something that's cool about using. Um, mm. This is like a an app or something that you draw it and then it kind of like uh, creates this process GIF at the end. It's very very cool. Yeah, no, I yeah, mean, you've I got love, a yeah, great eye for this. Beautiful work. I love the, um, yeah, like, I don't know. I'm just, like, really attracted to the highlights. Like, I love just, like, that, like, a really chunky white um, highlight. And a still mm. life. it's just, yeah, it's, it's really lovely. This is great. And I feel like, I mean, it, if, I mean, it's not a floating boulder. But um, you can even, I feel like we could all have a, even a little go at, you know, seeing stuff that you've got in your own house and actually, you know having a play and trying to trying to replicate what Anika's done. Um, yeah, because it's, it's, it's brilliant stuff. Um, really liking it. And actually something which I'm going to, when this is uh, stop going, I'm going to show you another project which really stuck with me um, for Anika's profile was, uh, it was the, uh, here we go. So she's exploring her with 3D geometric shapes yeah, using uh, an Adobe dimension. Um, and this is this awesome. Is I mean, I really, really cool. When I when I saw these, I just I don't know why I'm feeling like I want to just 
like squeeze them or like sort of chew them. I, like I was going to say, yeah, I like, I like want to touch <laughs> and like, yeah. yeah. I just think it's like very soft. Definitely. And like the colors is just like absolutely spot on. So um, totally. yeah, I love it. Your 3D skills are insane and they could really, really, really cool. Yeah, it's um, like really nice combination of forms as well. Like the rounded, mm, but still feeling very geometric. Definitely. And just as well for those who you know who, who are quite new to the Adobe Spotlight, you know, don't forget definitely to uh, to submit for your recommendations for creatives, um, and we can obviously highlight those hopefully for our next um, artist spotlight. So uh, yeah, definitely get submitted. It'd be good to uh, to see who you guys put forward. So uh, then we can uh, definitely celebrate it. And uh, I think we should have a little look at one more. What stands out for you, Rachel? Oh, let's see. Um, Choices, right? It's just there's too many. It's too many maybe... good ones. <laughs> Maybe you look at something. Actually, I'm kind of I'm really interested with the the bunny. <laughs> I'm like a, the, drawn to the. It's up. It's up a little higher. It was the one like right above the picture? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the only bunny there. How could I miss that one? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good shout. Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, she's That's painted funny. this entirely on the Adobe Fresco uh, oil brushes on the iPad Pro. This is beautiful. Yeah, it's so good. I love the mm, signature. Really cool. <laughs> it looks. Yeah, I mean the text is lovely. It looks so real. So a little play. It's so cool, sort of seeing how this has been built as well. Like the just that process, right? Is is very very cool. Yeah. Just I on love... that topic, I mean, do you have any do you have any pets yourself, Rachel? <laughs> I do not. Um, okay. Would love to eventually someday, but mm. haven't haven't taken the step yet. What about you? Uh, no, 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 I haven't. I, if I said I had a bunny, I mean, that would be a bit of like completely out of coincidence, right? <laughs> but I have no, I have no pets, but, um, but no, I mean, going back, going back to what we're looking at now, this is, um, this is really beautiful work, Anika. So, uh, yeah, like very, 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 um, very well done on the different projects you've got. And again, yeah, it's you know, if I could see, you know, definitely give Anika a follow on Behance. Um, again, if you're, if you haven't got a Behance profile, you know, you can follow people like Anika just to get a real feel um, for their work ethic and the style that they do. Um, obviously, Anika's a branding package designer and also graphic designer. So, um, so yeah, definitely get following and you can sort of see her process. Um, and obviously, we're coming to that sort of part now at the end of it where, you know, we've just looked at the uh, you know, spotlight, but also, Rachel, it'd be cool to, you know, sort of see if people want to sort of follow on for yourself and, you know, know about a bit more of your work. Is there any way you can sort of tell us a bit more about how we can we can do that or see some more work from your end? Yeah, uh, of course. Projects? Yeah. Um, so I have a little PDF that we can, um, just, uh, oops, um, some, I'll just kind of do a little click through here, but, um, I do have a Behance, so feel free to, I think it's, um, linked at the bottom of this video, um, website is currently a work in progress, but just to give you a little sample of some things that I've worked on. Um, oh yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of like click through these quickly. Um, but yeah, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of print, um, some editorial pieces. This was a fashion book. Um, we got to do a really great two uh two spot color neons throughout the book so that's what you're seeing here is this like hot pink and neon orange um was for a fashion designer and then yeah lots of some art direction photo shoots um cool. I'm loving the more print pieces so again layering typography and different print processes um playing with light branding more print and collateral um yeah lots of very like kind of bold, more graphic, um, color driven mm. work. Um, yeah. Also creating these little like elements that, you know, lots of print collateral elements that you can leave behind for a brand, um, different ways to kind of make an impression and communicate the story of, you know, a place or a person or a business. Um, some really cool photo shoots and lookbooks and websites, e-com. So yeah, and you got a real just... eye for colors. It's beautiful. Like you're, the different things things happening here is just like it's so eclectic, right? With the different way that you do it, it's, it's cool to see. 
Thank you. And then um, little zine from last time as well. So that was just a very quick overview, but um, yeah, I'm also on Behance if you want to look at things um, in a little bit more detail, but um, oh, that's good to yeah. see. What again, mm. oh, sorry, go on, go on. Oh no, I was just going to say, um, would love to see some of your work as well. I have your website up here if we can. Yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like we're in that similar, you know, we're in a similar space, um, you know, in terms of uh, you know, working with print editorial. So yeah, with, with myself, I mean, I'm a freelance graphic designer. Um, primarily, yeah, I work within editorial. Um, so a project I worked on quite recently uh, is the top, top left one, Dare to Change Your Life, um, which was a front cover design with, with Penguin Books, um, working uh, with Penguin and, and obviously Lawrence Colley, who's a, who's a British boxer. Um, and again, it was quite cool with this because you know, I had a lot of fun of experimenting with you know, different covers and, and thinking of ways we can you know, really, you know, really basically just have fun with it. Um, and obviously kind of showcase, you know, obviously Lawrence, um, his, a lot of his work that he does, or the, what should I say, the, the sport that he does, I should say, is obviously boxing. But the story itself is all about, you know, lessons that you could take, um, you know, and how you can actually, you know, basically chase your dreams and actually succeed in them. Um, and Lawrence has got quite a nice story about how he's kind of come, you know, through the ranks and kind of made itself to champion. So, um, so yeah, it's quite an aspirational story, quite an inspiring one. And I've tried to replicate that through the visuals too. So, um, so yeah, like a bit like your work as well, Rachel, where you experiment with color and like, I, you know, I feel like it resonates well, well with me as well. Totally. I um, love this. Um, also what's happening here within the type, that image kind of getting like a, a sneak peek of that image. It's kind of like a teaser into the yeah. story. I like that a lot. Yeah. I kind of thought it'd be quite nice to see, maybe if you wanted to do, you know, more about, you know, the name and the, the subject more than, than him, if you wanted to kind of, you know, that's why the clipping mask was, was there but um yeah i mean it's just playing around and just um again similar to yours as well your it was quite nice seeing the different you know shapes and, and and contrast you have um and again you know i got a lot of print on there and and a mixture so um yeah definitely check out my, my website kieranos.com if you're if you're interested in seeing it but also yours as well rachel so your uh do you have your behance profile as well perhaps we could have a look at your uh um, yeah. profile that'd be quite cool to Check that out for so for them obviously for those of you who are in um in the chat obviously you know you can hopefully get a profile and, and create one and you can um you know definitely follow follow myself and Rachel just to get a real feel for um for for the creators behind the work um I mean I love that project you've got the I think you had it in your portfolio before um in your designs but the middle one the uh middle yeah that one yeah this one taken was back very fun um it was for an opening gala for an art museum that had undergone major renovations and they were having this kind of grand reopening and they called it the Lux Naturalis Gala because it was the first time that natural light was being introduced into the museum. So mm. we thought it could be really nice to play with this idea of light and seeing something in a new light, um, kind of interacting with this piece. So we did Kind of like a series of different print processes so here we're doing like white on a sheet of vellum so it has that transparent mm. um you know sometimes it's easier to read depending on what kind of light you're holding it in um and then here this was the clear holographic foil so in some you know nice. as you can kind of see here sometimes you it's a little bit more subtle and then when the light hits it in the right way you kind of get this full spectrum but you can kind mm. of see here like it's very like vibrant but then it's also extremely subtle like down here you can't really tell mm. um but yeah we that touched was... that yesterday as well didn't we like the full like we mentioned like if there's a way we could i don't know see budget was not option we could have play like play around with oh yeah the foiling could... and like covers <laughs> go wild with different print processes yeah i mean i feel like print okay. is kind of its own language in itself and um you know there's so oh, many sure. so many things you can do but for yeah sure. so. is there any other projects that you know based on any sort of print that you want to show get more on your on your behance because you cover again quite a lot of different of different things there and we've kind of had like an insight into your world as like you know a graphic designer so it's quite it's quite cool to see it. Um, actually, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about the, the foot one. I saw that one. That, uh, I can't the remember the name one? of that project. I say the foot project, but yeah, foot traffic art direction. I was sort yeah. of taken back by that when I was browsing you. This was That's for. Really cool. This was for a um, very expressive sock company. So they really pride themselves on having um, you know this these like 
we, we came up with this expression, walk out loud or yeah, let your socks do the talking. So we had, we had all these different like expressive <laughs> um, language coming into play, but it's all about kind of like wearing your personality on your sock. So this was um, with the previous studio I was at, um, me and another designer concepted this shoot and um, had really That's fun awesome. kind of creating these kind of kitschy um, different sock scenarios that kind of spoke to the sock. So for example, um, for the whale here, we did it in the bathtub. Um, mm. You know, we had these like teeth chattering socks. So bringing that in as a prop. Um, I mean, yeah, the sock kind of... game is pretty strong here. Like I need to sort of upgrade my own socks just based on what I'm looking at. It. It's yeah, a, right. It's very, really cool. Very expressive. But yeah, no, this was this was a, a very fun shoot as well. Do you have a favorite? Just have, I, I, I have all those shots we're looking at now. Was there any one particular that really resonated well with you? Um, oh yeah, that's that's a, that's a cool one. Mm, I, yeah, I really love, um, I really loved this pink bathroom. Um, so I think some of those shots are really nice mm. with the whale sock. Um, but I also there's a violin one. You see, like that was um, another one of the, the bathtub shots. I think this one's kind of fun as well. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. It's cool. Again, like obviously this is so different to print, but it's it's nice to sort of see. And this is what's really cool again with like you know the the Behance profiles, and you know you can get an insight into the different types of projects that we do as designers. Um, you know, touching on my work and a bit of Rachel's work as well. It's obviously we both like our print, but it's nice to see if you know art direction work and and branding and, and logo designs and different things as well. So um, yeah, hopefully yes. you get like, you guys in the chat have had a real insight into into basically Rachel's world, um, into as a creative, um, and just a few things kind of, you know, as we get to that sort of latter stage, you know, stage now about wrapping up, um, you can join Adobe uh, tomorrow for full day of masterclasses with our Adobe evangelists. Um, and there you can catch uh, Nick Longo and Andrew Hotchreddle um, on off at hours uh, to the rescue tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Pacific. Um, this season, they're going to be doing office hours with partners with business owners, students, and freelancers to help them identify to overcome uh, creative hurdles. So definitely don't want to miss out on that one because it's going to be a good one. Um, and yeah, Rachel, I feel like two days has just gone, I mean, say two days, it's not been two full days, but you know what I mean? Like the sessions have gone quite quickly. They really um, have. So uh, yeah, it's, um, I mean, it'd be quite cool to show you maybe some, I mean, I've touched on obviously one project. I can show you maybe perhaps another project. Do you have my website still up? I can um, maybe show Absolutely. you some uh, Let's some check more. it out. Um, so uh, oh, yeah, actually, this was um, one that I just, hmm. I clicked on this. Do you want to go through this or should we go? Uh... Yeah, sure. So Laville, I mean, Laville is, it's it's very much, uh, it's, a, it's a platform uh, which helps uh, aspiring actors and actresses uh, so basically get into the industry um, and we put on well when we could but before COVID events which would help uh, young people kind of get into that industry um, and we would uh, if you sort of scroll down a bit more we, we've got different uh, designs and, and social media so my role within the team was a uh, graphic designer so I created all of the social media assets um, and then the branding as well behind it um, so yeah I mean, that was a that was quite a cool sort of cool project to work on um, I like this, uh, um, the nice, the combination of, you know, the sands and this more kind yeah. of human hand done textural shape. Is yeah, nice. it was, um, I mean, that was, it's, 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 it's weird because obviously now, I mean, this was when, you know, we could actually go out and we could see people and, you know, really mingle. And this is what a lot of our project, uh, our work that we do was about, you know, getting people from the industry who's obviously, you know, quite senior to come down and, and give talks um, and share their experiences about, you know, how do they find getting into the industry? Um, and obviously, you now hopefully we're going to get back into that a bit more as you know things start to lift up with lockdown. Um, but yeah, right. until then, it's all online. <laughs> um, Everything yeah. is digital. Exactly. Um, and Afrida, I mean, Afrida is quite a nice project actually. That that sort of top one. Um, we could talk about that one actually quite oh, quite a nice I one. See, see. Um, so this one was a project which was uh, dedicated to uh, African stories. Um, so what we've done is myself and, and, and Nancy, who's the editor um, and founder of Afrida, um, we would create collate stories which would um, showcase people from the continent of Africa um, about their stories of what it means to be from home um, and what it is to, you know, what is home for them. Um, so some really interesting sort of stories in there um, and my role 
within this was to um, design the editorial layout for it. Um, so everyone featured had their own um, story, which, you know, for them, what it means to be home um, on the continent. Um, and it covered from musicians to, to poets and, and so forth. But um, and yeah, this was a nice one to work on. This was definitely uh, this was definitely a nice one to work on. Um, so so yeah. were these uh, images submitted or did you guys? Yeah, we got, um, well, it was, a lot of it was actually from Twitter. So we actually got people who okay. sent in stories and then we kind of just like, well, say we as Nancy as the editor to kind of filter that content um, and then supply it to myself. And then, you know, we made that content into, you know, the tactile print. Um, but the process was lovely, actually quite nice because I, I know Nancy from projects we worked on before. So we already had that quite nice connection from projects we did previously. Um, so yeah, this was one of those ones where it was quite, quite nice to work on. But on that topic of editorial and grids and, you know, going back to, you know, your project at the very beginning, I feel like obviously, you know, we're very much into our print and into our layout. So it's quite nice to connect with you, um, you know, from all over New York, from me from London. Um, to get a real feel for it. So, so yeah, Rachel, I mean, it's, it's been awesome, like this whole, you know, two-day session. And hopefully for those, you know, who've tuned in, um, they've had a real feel for, for both of us as creatives um, and, you know, very much seen your work. So, yeah, definitely tune yes. in for some more Adobe Live content. Um, and a big thank you to everyone in the chat, big thank you to our mediators, and obviously more important, thank you to you, Rachel, for your time, because you've been amazing. And so, thank uh, you, Kieran. You've been an absolutely wonderful host. It's been such a pleasure. My pleasure. No, it's been great. So uh, yeah, take care, everyone. And I um, hope you see you very, very soon. So uh, have a good one. See ya. Bye. <laughs>